Thank you, Chairman Nackenhead, for that kind introduction. President Bircham, Provost Hellick, members of the Board of Trustees, and soon to be distinguished graduates of Loyola, Loyola Marymount University. And of course, the honored guests, ladies and gentlemen. I am extremely grateful to have this privilege to be here on such an important occasion of your lives. Graduation day is always a happy time filled with mixed emotions. But first, let us give thanks to all those who have helped you along. Your parents, and in some cases, your grandparents for their love and financial support. Your teachers for their dedication and encouragement. And to your fellow classmates for their friendship and compassion. It's also a time to reflect what you have learned and to feel a sense of accomplishment. A time to say goodbye for now to the friends you have made and vow to keep in touch and see that your paths cross again. It's a time to briefly rejoin your families, even to sleep late for a day or two while you think about the future and putting your newly acquired knowledge to work. I am sure that you have found, as I have observed, that the end of one experience is just the beginning of another. Because education is much like success. It is, in reality, a journey, not just the destination. That journey will take you into a world that is in a very exciting and challenging period of evolution. In a political, social, and economic sense, there has been a great upheaval in the world these past three decades and is still going on today. For example, the technical revolution boggles the mind. We are in the era of the domain of ones and zeros, the digital world, an age of instant communication, and a universe of knowledge at your fingertips with just a click on the keyboard. At the same time, who would imagine the sudden demise of world power and a sprinkling of democracy in Eastern Europe only to be challenged by recent events? And now we have a wave of religious fanaticism throughout the Middle East, a wave with no boundaries like a virus with no cure. To top it off, the lack of government oversight a few years ago allowed over-leveraging of our financial institutions and they threw us into a recessionary period that took years to recover. So the future you inherit will require all the initiative, perseverance, and motivation you can muster to find a secure position in the workforce. It is also a period that cries out for effective leadership because the world is still full of opportunities for those who are looking to succeed. Your first step is to put to work the education you have acquired. In too many cases, an educational institution has become like the lamppost, which the drunk leans for support, having no interest in its light. So it is that many people consider their college academic achievements uh, just another pin in the calendar of life. But the education you have received here is not enough. You have to tackle the future you face. You must mix in what I call a little foresight, a quality that has been lacking in this country. What do I mean by foresight? I can best explain it by quoting a most unlikely source, a friend of my son's when he was young, Dr. Seuss. Although he wrote for children, this paragraph has meaning for all, and it goes something like this. Said Conrad Cornelius O'Dell, my very young friend who was learning to spell, the A is for ape and the B is for bear, C is for camel, H is for hare, through to Z. Z is for zebra. I know them all well, saith Conrad Cornelius O'Donnell O'Dell, 
from the beginning to end, from the starting to close, because Z is as far as the alphabet goes. Then he almost fell flat on his face on the floor when I picked up the chalk and drew one letter more. In the places I go, there are things that I see that I never could spell if I stopped with a Z. Most of the world has resisted looking beyond Z to the bitter end. Every major advancement of civilization has met with extreme resistance. I think society's outlook on change is aptly described by Arthur Clarke, a distinguished British physicist and science fiction author. He said there are three phases to a good idea. Phase one, that's stupid, impossible, just don't waste your time. Phase two, yeah, it's possible, but it's not worth doing. Phase three, I always said it was a good idea. <laughs> History is full of examples where this is so. Listen to the comments made by famous people who could not see beyond Z. In 1899, Charles Duell, the director of the U.S. Patent Office, said, everything that can be invented has been invented. Not long after, in 1905, President Grover Cleveland uttered this gross misconception. Sensible and responsible women do not want to vote. Scientist and Nobel Prize winner in physics, Robert Millikan, should have known better when he stated in 1923, there is not a likelihood man can ever tap the power of the atom. In my own field, as late as 1957, a scientist and radio pioneer inventor, Lee DeForest, made this famous quote, man will never reach the moon regardless of all future scientific advances. And that was just 11 years before I circled the moon on Apollo 8. <laughs> Fortunately, there were those in days gone by who refused to live in the A to Z world. They wanted to see what was beyond Z. Imagine the world we would live in if men such as Socrates, Columbus, Erickson, Magellan, Einstein, Pasteur, Sabin, and countless others who had decided not to expand their horizons. I have seen what foresight or thinking beyond Z has accomplished in the science of space. But each of you pursuing your college education in your own particular field in challenging times can also think beyond Z. You can dream and create and make your contribution to the future of mankind in this world. It will not always be clear that applying your knowledge and foresight will produce immediate results. There is a short-sighted tendency in all of us to cancel our long-range goals if we cannot see immediate returns. But we must commit ourselves to long-range goals if we are to succeed. You'll be amazed at what you can do. My mother could hardly believe that I circled the moon in 1968. But today, my 48-year-old son doesn't think it's any big deal, <laughs> because after all, we had done it as long as he can remember. Your generation will stand on a higher hill because of the mountains we had climbed, and the whole world benefits from your ready acceptance of it. If you can take our accomplishments as commonplace, then think of the new horizons that you can see beyond. From your vantage point, your education and imagination will carry you to places which I wouldn't believe possible. Every generation has the obligation to free men's minds to look at a new world. Look out from a higher plateau than the last generation. Your vision is limited not by what your eye can see, but what your mind can imagine if you only go beyond Z. A moment ago, I said it was up to everybody to build a better world. I really mean that. When I circled the moon and looked back at the Earth, my outlook on life and my viewpoint of the Earth changed. By holding up my hand at arm's length, 
I could completely blot out our planet with my thumb. And I suddenly realized how insignificant we all are. My impression of Earth was one of an incredibly beautiful blue and white ball, much like a Christmas tree ornament, hung in an absolutely black sky. You see the blue of the water and the white of the clouds. You don't see Los Angeles, not even New York. You don't see boundaries or people, no whites or blacks or French or Greeks, Christians or Jews. The earth looks completely uninhabited, and yet you know that on spaceship Earth, there lives over six billion astronauts, all seeking about the same things from life. When, when viewed in total, the earth is a spaceship, just like Apollo. We are all the crew of spaceship Earth, and just like Apollo, the crew must learn to live and work together we must learn to manage the resources of this world with new imagination. The future is up to you. Just look beyond Z. And try to remember occasionally, poor Conrad or Cornelius O'Donnell Dell, that he almost fell flat on his face on the floor when I picked up that chalk and drew one letter more. In the places I go, there are things that I see that I never could spell if I stopped with a Z. Good luck, Godspeed in your future endeavors. Yeah.